Here at Gruntwork, we've got a product called Gruntwork Pipelines. It's our continuous integration, continuous delivery solution for infrastructure and applications. The pipeline automates applying changes to resources and destroying resources managed by Terraform modules. It consists of a CI server and a Gruntwork ECS deploy runner. You can learn more about Gruntwork pipelines, including how to set it up, in our guides on gruntwork.io. This walkthrough starts from an already set up pipeline on an example Gruntwork reference architecture. The Gruntwork RefArch is a customizable, battle-tested, end-to-end CIS compliant IAC solution. You can buy it from us for a flat fee, and it comes with Gruntwork pipelines. In this video, I'll be adding two new modules to my architecture code and then have Gruntwork pipelines automatically deploy those into my AWS architecture. In the Gruntwork pipelines destroy video, we saw how to destroy the sample application from the stage environment, which we were running on AWS EKS. So please watch that to learn how. Here, we'll add the sample apps back. So here's the commit that you might have seen from a previous video where I deleted the staging sample app folders. I also showed you before that the staging app doesn't come up anymore. And I also showed that the in Amazon, we actually still have this cluster running. The, the cluster is there. I also showed you the output from running some kubectl commands like get pods for the kube system, which shows that all of these supporting services are still running. and. Um, get pods on the applications namespace, which shows me that nothing is running there because I only had sample apps running. I did not have my own other application running. So now I'm going to check out main. So now I want to restore this code. What am I going to do? Well, I can go back to the commit before where I actually destroyed it, which is here. Uh, in fact, I'd like to go back to before I set the force destroy flag as well, because I want to make sure that it's set back to false. So I'm going to run in, back to the commit here, this one, which is before all of the destroy commits began. So git checkout that commit. Uh, make sure it looks like, yes, head is set correctly. And I'm going to copy these folders, um, stage, US West, stage, services, sample app, star. And I want to copy them up a directory. So now I will show you what that looks like. There they are. And I'm going to get checkout main again, go back to the latest commit, because I don't really need the other stuff. Um, I've saved off those folders. So now if I want to restore these, I'm going to check out a new branch and call it row restore stage sample apps. And now I'm going to copy from here, sample app star to the same place that we deleted it from. Yes, services. Uh, as a directory. That's right. I knew I needed that dash r. Um, git status. Okay. Um, git add. Git status. All four files are there. And I want to make sure that it's set correctly. All those variables are set correctly. So for example, here, inputs. Yes, false. This is the flag that we set to true prior to then destroying the sample app. I want to make sure that it's set back to false here. That would um, then that way when I do destroy it again, I set it to true again. And there's nothing in the back end inputs that changed that need to change. So things are good there. I'm going to commit this with, um, let's see, I will say uh, restore sample apps in stage. And I'm going to push this to there we go. Push that and check uh, that it shows up. So if we go into pull requests, we have a new branch 
and I can create a new pull request for this. And you can see my lovely files are back. I didn't have to change any of the variables. I didn't have to modify any of the stuff. For example, the secrets are still there, the same secret. I didn't have to change that hash at the end of it. And um, same with the sample lab backend config secrets. So everything is the same. Just to make it as easy as possible to show you that it does work. And uh, if I run back to CI, I can see that I've got my restore stage sample apps job running. And it's just going to run plan because we're not on the main branch. We're on a branch branch. <laughs> uh, let's look at the plan. Now, one caveat, I did not delete the terraform state file. So if you had failed to delete the, ter the terraform state file after destroying the sample apps, this is the example that shows you that it would still be fine. So here it shows you that plan for the back end. It's going to add some stuff. Here's the front end plan. Seven to add. Okay, I think that based on this output, this looks exactly like uh, creating or adding these sample apps in the first place, and it looks like the entire job is now complete. So we can go here, it should say success, plan is done, and uh, restore the sample apps and stage, the checks have passed, and we can merge this. You should have branch protection set up here so that a non-contributor must approve the pull request. And in my case, I don't have that set up because otherwise this example would be difficult to show you. So I will go ahead and confirm the merge. And now it's merged into main. And that means there's a job running now. Should be, yes, there it is. That will do a plan uh, and then finally the apply. So we wait. The plan should take again around three minutes. We're back. It looks like the plan has completed. Let's take a look one more time. Plan looks like it is exactly what we saw. Four to add for the back end, seven to add for the front end. We can approve this. Approve. Now we wait for the deploy to complete. The deploy is ready. So let's see. We are updating these. That's correct. We're running apply on the back end first. Here's the plan for that. And it's now starting to do the deployment here. Here we go. Helm release application. So we started creating it here and it'll show us every 10 seconds the status on that. It's still creating. Sometimes it's very quick. It takes less than a minute. And sometimes it takes longer than five minutes. The default or the, well, the way that the module works, the way that Terraform works is there is a five minute timeout. And if it doesn't complete within that five minutes, meaning the pods do not get up to a ready state and there's a health check that completes uh, with uh, 200 OK, then it will consider it failed within the Terraform output, even though the app is actually up and running. So take a look here. It only took a minute and 11 seconds. That is often the case. So you might be totally fine and not run into an, a timeout issue. Um, now, remember there are two things that are going to get deployed. So it says deployment finished without error, but there's another one to run. It runs this command per module folder. So I need to... Okay, the front end plan has shown up here. Seven to add. And it continues to actually add them. Things are added. The last thing that will get created is the Helm release application. Again, the front end might take a minute, it might take five minutes, it might take longer. 
while this is going, we can check uh, what pods are running. So let's go up to, let's see, I'm going to run get pods. So I have this in my history here. So here's the output of running cube cuddle on get pods. You can see that the back end is ready and the front end is running, but not ready. And we can even just for funsies, I want that to, um, check the logs for this. Seed from this command. Ah, and we are ready. So I bet if I run get pause, I should see that everything is good. So in this case, I did not run into a timeout issue, but if you did, you might simply be able to hit this rerun button and say rerun from start, rerun from failed. It doesn't matter which one you check here, uh, but it, because it, it will run the, at least it will run the deploy step again, which means it will attempt to do the Helm release application deploy. And that should go really quick the second time around because it shouldn't actually have failed. Uh, if you do run into an issue, please contact us and we will help you figure that out. Um, but for the most part, it should be just peachy to restore your sample app. Okay, you can see that success has been um, achieved in only 10 minutes for that particular job workflow. Uh, and let's go to the actual app and see if it's come up yet. It hasn't come up yet. Either that or I have a cached, something is getting cached here. So let me see if, uh, maybe I'll try this browser. Network sample app stage. Okay, so I tried a different browser and it worked out. Um, yeah, so sometimes it's just like a caching issue. Like I have to go in and clear all my cache and I just wanted to avoid doing that. But you can go ahead and uh, open it in, an, in a different session, like a private session. You can see here my Redis is up. Sample app uh, basic backend endpoint is up. The cache, uh, we already checked that. The database, MariaDB, is also up. Um, so we can close these. And we checked our cube cuddle. And we also checked Circle CI. So yeah, now you can both destroy and restore using the CICD pipeline, and it's relatively painless. Hope you enjoyed this video, and happy travels in the world of infrastructure. Thanks for watching.